welcoming you to Smithers Oasis and IFT India Zoom channel, striving to showcase to you the world's best designers and the opportunity to learn and understand floral techniques from the very best. It has been our endeavor from the very beginning to promote the art of floristry across the world and in India too. Our floral education venture, Institute of Floral Design, has an alumni of over 1,600 students plus. We are also associated with Skill India and are proud to be their education partners. The first recognition of floristry as a trade in India. Design of Florel, a series where the designers demonstrate techniques and designs, a precursor to the skills and techniques then that one must acquire to become proficient in the art of floristry. You can learn floral design from the comforts of your home through our advanced certificate course now available online. Enrollment through IFE's website, link for the website as display. Next batch commences on 6th February you can call 976-976-8838 for more details. Your host this evening is Seema Javeri, and we have with us, live from Hong Kong, Dr. Solomon Leong. Before we go into today's session, sharing with you some of Solomon's work. <laughs> is a member and certified floral evaluator and judge from the American Institute of Floral Design. He is the director and chief designer of Solomon Blumann, a bespoke floral design studio based in Hong Kong. Solomon Blumann Institute is an accredited education partner for the AIFT and provides floral education services with range, which range from classes for students, hobbies, and those aspiring professionals working towards their CFE and AIFT qualifications. As a doctor of philosophy in cultural studies, his extensive knowledge of culture and history in relation to floral art has turned him into a successful commentator of floral design. In fact, BBC has described his English garden style and European flower arranging ethos as extraordinary and striking. 
Apart from being an internationally sought after floral demonstrator, competitions too are an important part of his professional life. His passion for floral art has seen him participate in competitions all the way from Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, China, Japan, UK, Switzerland, Fleurmore in Belgium to the most prestigious FTD World Cup Philadelphia 2019, where he represented Hong Kong. Dr. Leong's award accolades are many. Just to mention a few here, gold medal for best floral arrangement at UK's world-renowned Chelsea show 2006, 2008, and 2014. His tally for gold and silver medals at Chelsea is such that from the year 2005 to 2018, there has not been a year in which he has missed out on either a gold or a silver. Best Designer Award at Leeds Castle, 900th anniversary. His unique approach to floral style and ASICs has made him a regular contributor in fashion and lifestyle magazines. We welcome Dr. Solomon on screen with us now. Solomon, hello everyone. How are you this evening? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for your invitation. And it's You're such an welcome. honor for me to be here with everyone. Yes, it is an honor for us Indian for us and our Indian audience to have somebody as renowned as you with us on our channel this evening. Just it's... before we start, I'll just take a quick second, a uh, couple of minutes there to address the audience. Some instructions before we start. Please put your name on the screen. Use rename so as to know you are with us. Please keep your camera off. And show your mic is always muted. In case you are logged out or we face any technical problem, immediately log again with the same user ID. As we progress, please put all your questions in the chat box to be addressed by the speaker as we go along in the session. So it's back to Solomon. Yes, Solomon. How are you doing? Good, good. So it's back to you. And um, Solomon, uh, a couple of questions I would like you to, uh, to ask you to enlighten our um, viewers about yourself. So Solomon, you have quoted somewhere that says, flowers are not a luxury, but a necessity to fully appreciate life and all the joys that flowers can bring. Can you expand on this philosophy, please? It is actually, um, well, probably I wouldn't call it a philosophy, but it's just almost like a way of life for me. I mean, and I would really like to share my passion of why I like flowers to every one of you. Because flowers is actually, I think it's almost like a gift given from God and it's so beautiful and if we can just take time to appreciate even the smallest of flowers we can actually be enlightened and be very happy for the rest of the day even just one single flower it doesn't have to be a lot of course you know when you have uh, the resources to spend on a lot of flowers of course you're going to be very happy but even if it's just one flower just one bloom you know is enough to make us feel happy because it's colorful it's actually like very you know it change according to the season it can be uh, scented it has so many different things about it and even the smallest flowers can inspire us about how we should live our life and a happy life and that's why I think that, you know, it's not only a luxury, it's actually a necessity. It actually teaches about life. Rightly say Solomon there, because it's like you say, you know, it's, uh, the fl uh, a flower is complete. It's got the scent, it's got the color, it's got, you know, it's got a sort of um, feel to it, you know. And of course, the emotions is expressive. So I think you you write about it. It's not a luxury. And one bloom itself is enough to take us there right coming to my second question i mean 
you've had the privilege of, or you've been honored to represent Hong Kong at the FTD um, World Cup in Philadelphia. Could you just brief us about your experience there? Well, it was a very, very um, intense experience, I would say. It's actually a um, educational, as well as inspirational, as well as like um, uh, a growth for anybody, you know, including myself, you know, although I've been in an industry for more than 20 years now, you know, but, you know, going to a place where all the best of the world's designers congregate together to compete is actually an other level. It teaches me to um, how to organize, how to source, how to manage, not only in terms of flowers, but how to, in, how, how, how you, work and how you operate and how you design in such a large scale event is actually quite eye-opening. And, in and, and to be able to represent the city that I was born in, I, I felt like completely privileged. It was like a once in a lifetime experience. I encourage anybody of you, if you have the chance, never miss it. Oh, super. So that was one, I think it was, it must have been a um, experience that like you say, it taught you a lot. Plus, it you know you were competing against the best in the world. So that was, that that is one experience where there's a lot to learn from each other. Also, exactly, it's it's all about learning and sharing, and that's why you know, like let's say, why I'm here is to share my knowledge with every one of you. All that I know, you know, like there's no point hiding what you've known, you know, because sooner or later, you know, it's all about sharing what I know and maybe what you learn from me, in the end, you will incorporate it and then turn it into one of your signature style or maybe your style can be inspiring to each other as well. So I think sharing is the perfect way and the perfect platform uh, to growth. I think you just said it, sharing is the, is the way to growth and without wasting much more time, we are so eager to have you start your work. It's over to you, Solomon. Thank you so much, Seema. Uh, it's, uh, again, you know, it's such a privilege for me to be here, to be sharing like some of my um, favorite styles to you and some of my favorite materials to all of you. You know, some of the materials is slightly uh, novel and I really would like to introduce those to you. Today, I'm gonna do three works. Uh, one is a simple, but very, very engaging work. And the other ones is um, more flowery, and the third one is actually uh, very spring. You know, we're using a lot of spring flowers. So let me start with the first one. Is actually what I would like to emphasize is what I have in my hands. These are called bleached palm. I think probably you'll be very familiar with this, like uh, palm trees probably is everywhere. Uh, like along, along, I think I think in Asia is actually very popular as well. You know, yes. it's, you can and see that it is anywhere. one of the popular thing here. Also, we do have these bleach farms here also in India. Yeah, it's it's perfect, and it's actually uh, paper thin. Actually, you can do it yourself. Uh, but sometimes when we need to dry it, we probably need to bleach it as well. And you can sort of like bleach it into white so that it looks like it's paper thin. And I think it's uh, very important to make it, uh, the shape of it, when we're designing with it, we must not hide its radiating shape. When we're talking about floral design, you know, like probably we'll be talking about a lot about like stem placement system. Uh, sometimes we talk about flowers having to radiate from a single growing point. And sometimes we have parallel, but here with the, Bleach fan palm, it obviously is a radiating kind of um, foliage. So it's like the sun, you know, with all the sun rays coming out from the middle. So I think it's the best if we are using it as a background or use it as something that enhance what you already have in your arrangement. Um, in order to use this, to maximum effect. I have chosen some of my favorite flowers for the season, and that is what I'm holding in my hand. This is called uh, Amaryllis, of course, and this particular variety is called Hercules, and it's actually a giant version. Uh, you can see it's actually as large as my face, and yeah. it's, it's actually quite a nice uh, uh, Amaryllis 
variety because they actually bloom sometimes three or four at the same time, which is quite unusual for amaryllis. For amaryllis, sometimes it blooms one and then it wilts and then the other comes along. It never comes along at the same time. But there's a trick uh, for you to how to force amaryllis to bloom all of the blooms at the same time is to starve it from water. Maybe you take your amaryllis back, uh, but you just leave it horizontal lying in a sheltered or cool area, dark area, leave it for two or three days and then give it a lot of water and then suddenly all the blooms will bloom at once. So I think it's a little trick that we can all, 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 all use. If you're having an event or maybe you're having a, um, a party, you know, it's always nice to um, have all the flowers open at the same time. And so, so that's, here, knowing that the amaryllis is also very hollow stem, so if yeah. you live it in the if you live, live it in the shade without without uh, the uh, without any water supply, it's not going to harm the flower, is it? Uh, no, it's actually quite amazing. Um, amaryllis have almost everything that it needs in the stem, so two or three days probably is enough. And even if you put it in water, like what I'm going to put it in my ceramic vase that I made myself, is that all you need is a tiny little bit of water, maybe an inch, maybe two centimeter. That's all you need to have for the flowers to survive, to bloom well. Uh, but if you want it to open at the same time, maybe you need a little bit more water. I think probably the control of water is the key for this bloom to bloom beautifully. And what you can see is like, because I'm using the long stem, this amaryllis is almost 80 cm, but I cut it really short. I have put in a skewer uh, inside the hollow stem, so it actually uh, supports it. So let me put that in first. Like if you're doing it at home, it's actually quite simple. Just arrange it as if you are placing flowers in your vase. And I put this one in. And I put the last one in. I, um, do a lot of ikebana as well. It's actually like the first, uh, when I entered into the floral world, I started ikebana first and then I changed into Western floral design because at first I, I started pretty early when I was a teenager and I would like to explore the world about flowers and uh, gardening and everything. And I stumbled into this school called uh, O'Hara when I was in London. And so I started off taking Ikebana lessons. But then afterwards, I sort of like go into the world of different colors of flowers. And that's how I ended up in doing a lot of uh, modern designs. And through that, you know, I think, I think the Ikebana roots actually stayed with me a little bit. Sometimes I like things that are really technical, but sometimes I like things that are really simple and effective. Yes, we do have the Ikebana schools here also. The Ohara, the Sugetsu, the Ikenobu schools here in India also. Now, coming back to this bleached leaf there, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, questions from the audience who say they would like to know the technique to bleach the, the, bleach the palm. About how or how to keep it? How, how to bleach, the technique to bleach the palm. It actually, you do need to shave it first. It's actually uh, because like when it's first cut from the tree, it's actually quite thick. And as you can see in the middle, it's actually almost completely flat. You can see it's almost like a piece of paper. So probably you do need to shave off a lot of the thickness or the, or the stiffness of the palm before you press it. And then you do put it in a mild bleach. Um, it's actually colored as well. It's actually colored into white as well to, in order to get into this. If it's just bleach, probably it would be slightly yellow. Okay, so it's like you have to make sure that it, it, it's sort of almost like uh, uh, thin before you put it in the bleach. And then um, you can also then color it later on for the whiteness. 
Yeah. Other, otherwise, it, it, will be, it takes forever. It probably takes a year in order to soften the fiber because the fiber of the palm is ultra thick. And so you do need to shave it and then you need to dry it before you actually color it or maybe color enhance it. Um, there are many different ways. It's actually quite different to what we usually saw, what we usually see on the market about the dry palm is because usually they are rather, rather thick and rather hard. But this one is actually quite wavy. So I think it's actually quite useful, especially when you're trying to create something that is uh, light. Uh, like ethereal, like uh, almost unreal, almost like a spirit, that, that kind of thing, you know, is, is actually very useful. And especially when you arrange it at an angle. So, so far, the two of them, I just have it like flat on. But if you look at it, if, it, if I look at it at, at an angle like that, it actually makes all the difference. It actually gives it a lot of dimension. It gives that now also. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of movement, a lot of rhythm, a lot of depth. And I really suggest you should try it, you know, like even if you can't, um, or, or maybe you don't have the time to, to um, do it yourself, just try something else. You know, maybe just a piece of paper cut into this kind of a radiating shape. You know, it actually will reward you with a different dimension or maybe a different approach of this particular design, which is just basically flowers in vase. So I think and flower design is a lot to do with experimenting also with different materials. Exactly. And uh, like what I'm putting in here is actually uh, a very large uh, painter's palette. Um, I can't remember what the name is, but it looks very tropical and I think probably it works very well when it comes to uh, grouping together because these are rather um, graphic kind of a flower. They are, aren't they? They have a real nice form itself and uh, I mean that size of an anthurium is like huge. It's actually quite huge. It actually is uh, grown by a friend from Taiwan. And I'm sure, you know, like probably you, you, you get different sorts of anthurium where you are as well. You know, just try and experiment it and even color it, you know. Um, I think, you know, the trend for now, like current trend that we have for like the last two years is that is, is to enhance or maybe color enhance some foliage as well as some flowers. And with flowers that has a large surface area, you know, it's almost like a huge canvas that you can play with. Yes, I think we have seen that trend, especially the colored foliage, which is like, it really gives the design a different look altogether. Yeah, it's so, so, you know, don't be afraid, you know, when it comes to color, I think it's actually very wonderful that we actually uh, try to use some unlikely colors, something like vivid blue, electric blue, metallics, black, white, uh, high contrast, or maybe even vintage or even uh, uh, gradation color, you know, anything in the world, anything in the color palette that you can use, you know, the world is your oyster. Just try it out, you know. My, my uh, philosophy, probably we talk about philosophy a lot, um, is that I really encourage people to experiment. If you never did anything, uh, you will never find out, you know. But you, you might read about it, but I think, you know, the best experience to learn is by trying it out. Put your hands uh, onto the flowers and try it out yourselves. Go to a flower school, you know, like, like this one. It's perfect, you know, for you to learn something and be hands-on. Yes, I think you really say it. you know, the best teacher is yourself. You need to, you need to experiment, you need to, you, you, even if you falter, it really doesn't matter because you've learned something there. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's learning through, uh, probably I wouldn't say like learning through failure, but probably learning through experience is the best way. Yes. And, and even until now, like, perfect. Yeah, and when you talk about the World Cup, you know, like I, I went there, you know, after being 20 years in an industry, I still go to compete. And I think, you know, learning is, is a never ending thing. So this and is my first piece. about your competitions, you know, I was like, 
I, when I saw your CV and I saw all those medals, that I said, my God, I don't think there's one competition that you missed out. <laughs> I try to enter as many as possible, even online ones, you know, uh, because this year we have got the COVID and everybody's staying at home. And I think, you know, it's actually when one door shuts, another opens. And I think it really is something that we really need to treasure. Maybe it's an opportunity of a lifetime. You just go online, enter any competitions, you know, there's nothing to lose, but everything. And that to arrangement there looks gorgeous. You know, the, the red against the white there, and with the green peeping out, it looks awesome. Thank you very much. So this is my first piece. I think it's actually quite simple, but I think if you get the angles right, and just trying to accentuate the fan palm, you know, that's the key to it. I encourage you to experiment it. So this is my first piece. If um, you'd like to help me to really, take it. Really, really gorgeous, you know. And those flowers there, they look, I mean, they look magnificent. Thank you so much, Seema. And I hope you enjoy it as well. And this yes. is uh, the first piece over there. And the second piece, we actually start with something that is rather simple, and that is one metal frame. But what can you do with one metal frame? You know, because I think this is quite a normal floristry metal frame that is mostly used for Christmas wreaths or maybe anything to do with a circular um, movement. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to turn it into something like this. Uh, like this. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so um, this actually has to do with uh, geometry, or maybe it has to do with something about straight lines. When we're talking about flower arranging, or maybe flower arranging education, what we need to know a lot of the times are design principles as well as design elements. How to make use of simple shapes like circle, or maybe curved lines, or maybe straight lines. How do you turn it into something that makes sense in terms of uh, design or maybe that suits your client or maybe if you're a florist you know how do you sell this product it's uh, something that we need to learn at school and I think that's an immensely interesting uh, process as well so today how are we gonna do this I'm not gonna make this this is just one variation but what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna make this this it actually t um, turns out that it actually this ring makes a perfect hand-tied structure. Yes, that looks like a spiral hand-tied bouquet. Yeah, it's, it's actually using exactly the same way we're using, uh, we're doing hand-tied bouquets, uh, a single direction spiral. And the material here is what we call salix, and that looks like this. Um, I'm sure you have it in, in, in India as well. Yes, is that the pussy willow, what they call the pussy willow? Yeah, that is the pussy willow. It's actually very popular here, uh, especially in January time uh, for Chinese New Year. And that's why we're using a lot of this uh, seasonal material. That's another of my philosophy is that I really enjoy using seasonal material. Don't really try to force yourself to use something that is out of season. Try to use something that goes with the season. and when the season is in, you know, is usually the cheapest, the freshest, the most beautiful, and the best for uh, your designs. Trying to force something, maybe trying to use tulips, for example, in August when it's very, very hot. I, I, I don't think it's a good idea, unless, you know, it's a very, very special occasion. Otherwise, I just encourage you to use something that is in season. I think that's so, a very good tip there. Use whatever is in season. Exactly. So here, what I've done is, because it takes a little bit of time, so I've pre-made this, but I'll show you why and how I make this. Um, first of all, I'll just take my willow, and then I just snip it in half, and then afterwards, I'll use this zip ties. Everybody uses zip ties. Yeah, cable. Um, we call them cable ties here. Electric oh, yeah, cable, cable ties. ties. Yeah, cable ties. And what we're going to do is that we will zip tie them onto the outside of the ring as if you're creating your bouquet. 
like this. Okay. Yeah. And when you have created four of them, you already created your base for your bouquet. It's actually an interesting way, an easy way, and highly effective way of creating a bouquet, which is good enough for a centerpiece as well. It can take up a lot of space. It's freestanding. It can last a long time. You can even change flowers uh, from the uh, structure and it's easy to make. You can make several of them, turn it into like a modular design and um, there is uh, just so many variations you can do with it and I really, you know, that's another thing that I encourage you to do. You know, maybe it doesn't have to be Pussy Willow, it can be just any, maybe even just, uh, you can tie flowers on it, you can actually tie carnations, it can turn into a ring of carnations. Actually, it's very easy. So, for example, I've made this four. I've made this four here. All we need to do is to make the stems cover each other at the base, turn it into a spiral, and make sure that the point, the point here is in the middle of your circle. Yeah? So that will make a very even um, conical shape. And what I have here is a 25 centimeter diameter uh, ring. And what I have here is a 35 diameter ring. And you can actually make two, turn it into each other and then put flowers in the middle. Or you can just leave it like that on the table, like what I'm having here. Or even you can make an identical arrangement, which is using another ring at the bottom. Yeah, yeah so, so that's it will, a very versatile technique there. Yeah, you can actually, maybe you can even turn it upside down, anything you want, any way you want. And I think this is where our students' uh, talent can kind of come through, you know. It's very easy, not difficult, but at the same time, it's, um, uh, allows room for creativity. And so is what that I'm going to prefabricated uh, ring there. Yes, it's actually a prefabricated ring. It's a very sturdy ring that people used to do Christmas wreath with. Um, like you, you, you wrap things in, you wrap things on. So I'm actually just using that ring. You can use any ring, you know, even hula hoops, maybe I don't know. Small hula hoops for kids, you know, to to tie your uh, branches on and I think that makes a perfect circle for your hand tied structure. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to put this into a transparent bowl here where it will sit perfectly and then I can put my water in it and later on I'm going to add some flowers and also on top I am going to add in a little vase here that I can put it in the middle. Okay. Yeah, where I can put other flowers or maybe, you know, for, uh, for an evening, you can actually use a uh, candle. That's what I was just coming to. That's a good candle. That's, uh, that's a nice place for putting the candle there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect. And even if you use candles, it projects the lights on the wall with, it, it's almost like a star shape. I've tried it, I encourage you to try it as well. It's very easy and it's very, very exciting. I, you know, just doing it, I, I, I couldn't stop sort of like talking about it because we came across this idea um, several years ago, I think, um, when I was doing an event for a, a, a brand they wanted something that cast shadow on the wall and it was around like New Year's time and so we created this and everybody loved it and I think it's really great. And I, I have it at home and it suits actually any kind of decor as well. So what I have in my hands are a mimosa or acacia if you like. It's actually a very, very uh, fragrant flower and anybody can I think probably uh, it's, it's this time of year that, that we have a lot. This particular one uh, comes from Italy and it's actually very, very, how do you say? It's actually very um, therapeutic, put it that way, and it's full of positive energy. Uh, yellow 
is the Pantone color of the year, yellow and yes. gray. Gray, yes. Yellow and gray. And I think, you know, uh, it's, we, we really can't go wrong with yellow in 2021, I think. <laughs> it's because... I, it, I think it brings a lot of sunshine and a lot of positive energy. Exactly. It's actually very, very... You, you can't really think anything bad about this, really. Um, yeah, that's, that's one color which makes you very... You know, it's, it's a happy color. It, it brings a lot of happiness around. It is, and and the shape of it, the ball shape of it, is perfect, and um, it's very uh, therapeutic. It's very friendly. This flower, because sometimes we talk about flowers, we have something called an expression. Flowers have expressions too. Um, flowers sometimes it can give you different feelings. Say, for example, Phalaenopsis orchids. It gives you this feeling about being a top model. Uh, slightly um, aloof, uh, slightly glamorous, you know, but not too friendly. But with mimosa, it's a very friendly flower because it's sunshine, it's in your face, you know. So it's all about emotions and how you convey your emotion with your, with, with your friends or maybe how you express yourself through flowers. It's actually quite um, a, almost like a mirror. It's flower arrangements and your designs is like a mirror. It mirrors how you feel that day. When, when, when I see your arrangement, I can actually see your character. I think it does. It really does show your personality there. Yeah, and so, so here, I'm, yeah, yes, I'm gonna go add in. Is, is there a question? No, so are those mimosas going in the little bowl of water that you put in the center there? Exactly here. Uh, if I'm allowed to show you uh, without yes. spilling, yeah, it's actually going right into the center of the. Right. Yes, it is. Yeah, and in order to make the center slightly more interesting, I'm just got it, gonna add in some of the peonies that I have here. Um, this particular peonies is called Sarah Bernard, and is a typical. Um, uh, Chinese New Year flowers. I think everybody loves peonies because it's very blousy, it's very fragrant, it's actually very beautiful and it's perfect to put in the middle as and our... Size uh, is, it's mm. really nice. Thank you very much. Um, I, I always try to sort of do something that is not... Well, we can go very technical, sure. We can go very, very technical. And let me show you this. All yeah, right. we can. Lovely, yeah, we can, lovely. Mm, we can go really technical, but sometimes, you know, uh, when flowers are this nice, I think they are better just to be appreciated on their own. And with some simple technique, I think it's actually will enhance. It's just almost like when we are cooking, when we have the freshest ingredients, it's always nicer just to cook it simply. Okay, so That's now afterwards... Looks so beautiful. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Seema. And uh, what I'm going to add in next is something that is quite spectacular. Um, these are called um, sweet peas, if I can just show you clearly. Yeah, the blue, blue sweet peas. Yeah, it's the blue as well as the maroon variety of it. I think it's beautiful and I think it contrasts really well with the yellow. With the but yellow, these, yes. Yeah, these, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add it onto the frame inside, but the stems is actually going to the water underneath here. So we have two ways of all water source here we're talking about. The little jar on the top as well as the uh, larger tray at the bottom. Uh, if you can't see it clearly, of course, I'm going to provide you with a lot of uh, finished product pictures and as well as the detailed pictures of this arrangement. And probably that yeah. way we will see it a lot more clear. But I think the audience would really appreciate that. 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually my pleasure to share my uh, passion with uh, you all, you know. Um, and colors is another thing that I am very enthusiastic about, you know, never be afraid of colors. I really like the, sometimes, you know, I, I watch um, uh, some Bollywood films and I really love the colors in it. It's oh yeah, so, we are a very yeah. colorful country. Yeah, I really love it. It's all the marigolds, all the colors, all the intensity, you know, it's like really is like a sensory overload. And I think it's actually inspiring as well. Sometimes uh, when I go to Europe, I see uh, different ways of using colors, but I've got no rules about it, you know, as long as you feel that, you know, the balance is right, there is a focal area, there is a, some kind of color harmony, or maybe the color speaks to each other, I think that will work. Of course, we talk about proportion and things like that, you know, but in the end, you know, it is a reflection of your state of mind. Okay. Like you rightly say, you know, the, the, the principles, elements, colors, they all fall in place as long as you know what you're doing and how you're dealing with them. Yes, it's actually the uh, principles and elements of design is actually a very, very good guidelines. It's almost like, mm, I always tell my students, you know what, elements are like lines and forms and colors and, and, and things like that, you know, what are they? They actually... Um, materials or maybe they're like food uh, that you bought from your supermarket or maybe these are food materials that you bought from uh, the market say vegetables or meat or something like that but and then the design principles are recipes how you should cook them how you should actually enhance them uh, what makes the best of them and um, how you should sort of appreciate them. And I think, you know, design principles and design elements are almost like how you cook a fine Michelin star uh, meal. Yes, and I think that's rightly said. We, we, we had our, our, our floral teacher and mentor was telling us the elements are the ingredients and the, um, the principles are the recipe to go ahead with your good, good food there. Yeah, it's actually, you know, it's, it's actually spot on, you know, I really love this analogy. So anyway, so this is my um, second piece here. Hope you... Uh, and, and, and you know, and, that's, that's such a creative way of using this as a hand bouquet plus using it as a, a center table piece or, you know, it's a versatile structure. Yeah, it is. Like You can hold it like this. You can have it standing you can put it in you can even wrap it up <laughs> so yeah. i think it's 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 anywhere that you want you can make it even huge smaller mini well it, yes it depends on the size of the i mean the size you want and the ring you can take but that's yeah. you know, something awesome i mean that's really nice because the technique there is so easy yeah, do it, you know, try it and, you know, you never fail. It's, uh, and you can even spray it like what we see, uh, like uh, I have actually sprayed the foot of this into gold. You can actually do a gradation of color as well, you know, maybe you can do a sunset color here from red all the way to yellow. Uh, the world is your oyster, you know, do, do like try to thing. experiment it. Yeah, you can so, do okay. you like. Yeah, exactly. You know, flowers are so wonderful. I, I really don't get tired about like talking about them. So um, I hope I'm not talking too much, Sima. Am I? <laughs> your, your, passion, your, your, your passion for flower is just coming through your demonstration. Oh, thank you very much. I really do like them. So the third piece here that I'm going to do is something like a um, elevated um, a parallel design. Um, I actually pre-greened them. I actually pre-greened uh, my my kind of like um, elevated stand here. It's like a wreath, but actually it, it comes with a stand. It comes with a stand. Okay. Oh, so okay. that's, it comes, that, that, that's how it comes, uh, uh, I mean, pre-fabricated or pre-made, right? Yeah, it's, it's already pre-made, but you know, also you can just, just take any wreath and then just sort of like lift it up a little bit because you need to have the 
um, mimosa hanging down. If, if the wreath is actually directly on the table, it will not have the same hanging down effect. So just try to lift it up slightly in order to have this waterfall kind of uh, effect. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this is that I'm gonna use what I have made just now and then I'm just gonna put it right in the middle here. It's almost like a trailing, like a, like a trellis for plants to grow on. Yeah? yeah? And just put it right in the middle. Okay, let's just move this one away. And then what we're gonna use is that another one of my favorite flowers here, and that's uh, the Narcissi. Um, Narcissi is uh, a very famous flower, and I think, uh, do we use a lot of these flowers in India as well? No, we don't get these here. We don't get them here. Ah, okay. So these flowers is a bulb flowers and it has many variety. So this large one is actually called daffodils. And yeah, daffodils. It's, yeah it signifies uh, spring. And a smaller version of it, this one is called, um, this particular one when, when the, with the yellow center. This particular oh, one with the... It's pretty. It looks yeah, like and it's the little one. Yeah, and it smells gorgeous as well. And so the whole thing is almost like a spring garden. And this variety is called Avalanche. Avalanche. Okay. And then there is still another one here that we have, and that is completely white. Uh, this is a Christmas um, favorite for a lot of people. And that's called uh, Paper White. Paper White. And Narcissi is actually a hollow stem flower as well. And one tip about this flower is that uh, when we buy them, it actually comes in like this. It has all the leaves yeah. and all the um, little, 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 uh, what you call it, um, a little wrap at the bottom here. If you okay, can zoom in like, a little it's bit. Got, it, it's like how even um, uh, uh, orchids would come. Either it's got a tube or it's got a little cotton, uh, a damp cotton wool there, right? Yeah, so yeah. When, you, when, when you're having the narcissi like this, you know, it's best not to cut them if this is already the length that you need. Yeah? Because once you cut them, the stems, the hollow stem here will start bleeding will start bleeding here. Once you cut it too high up, it will start to bleed and then the flowers will not last as well. On average, um, a narcissi will last about five to six days. If you put it in uh, water or maybe you can put it in oasis like what I'm doing, you know, uh, try to use oasis uh, max if possible, or maybe you can just use Oasis Standard or use Oasis a Ring, it's actually perfect for it. Or maybe you can use some flower food, you know, on average it lasts about six days. But once you cut it short, you know, it might not last as well. And uh, one tip about um, Narcissi is that um, nobody knows that it's actually a killer for tulips. If you put Narcissi and tulips together, you will kill the tulips almost the next day. So never okay. really mix the tulips as well as the narcissi together because they don't. I think that's a, that's that's really nice tip. That never put your daffodils with uh, your tulips. Yeah, it's, it's actually very important because we've tried many times and then the results were disastrous. <laughs> but you know, on its own. Uh, but you do see a lot of people putting putting them in a mixed bouquet, but you know, it's, it's, it's not going to last as well. So I'm just going to grow it in like as if it's like a vertical and parallel design. It's almost vegetative. Yes, it looks like a, uh, almost like a naturalistic design there. Frame. Um. Solomon, we've lost you. Solomon? 
Solomon, your camera has gone off. Could you check on that? Solomon, you seem to have logged out. Well, uh, audience, just bear with us. I'll try to connect up with him in a minute. I think he's back. Sorry, Solomon, with uh, your camera went off. Solomon, can you hear us? You're on mute. Solomon, you're on mute. You'll have to unmute yourself. Solomon, unmute yourself. Is it okay? I yeah, can it's okay. Sorry, yeah, okay. We, I think you got logged out. Yeah, so, so, so the connection locked me out. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyway, no, we, no we're still here. So everybody, um, no panic. So <laughs> we're still here. No, no, and don't worry. We are still here as well. <laughs> we're still here. The daffodils are still here. So I was just talking about the um, narc narcissism is actually comes from the daffodils because uh, narcissism is actually uh, to describe people being narcissistic is like being arrogant and being too proud of themselves or something like that. You know, Greek mythology has said that uh, Narcissi is actually a Greek god and he loves himself so much that he looks in the mirror and looks in the river, you know, for his own reflection every day that he loves himself. We think that he's so beautiful every day. He looks into the river for his own reflection. But and then one day he was so obsessed with himself, so he actually fell into the river and drowned. And then oh, afterwards, bad. yeah, that's sad. <laughs> but and then after his death, along the riverside comes a lot of daffodils and narcissi. And that's the story of narcissi. Okay. So it's like you you've got to admire admire yourself, but you have to know when and where to do it, not <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you just need to admire yourself safely. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here we are. So I'm almost done with the daffodils, and then what I'm going to add in slightly different next is another type of sweet pea that I have here. Is actually a uh, I'm not sure whether you can see clearly is actually a, a champagne colored um, a sweet pea and yeah, again you know, the, the, light 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 like a tone there uh, it's got a tint there actually yeah it's, it's almost like a champagne kind of a color and what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to trail it into the um, frame itself so as if the frame is actually uh, if, uh, as if the sweet pea is leaning against the trellis to grow and it gives a really naturalistic it's almost English gardeny kind of a feeling to it um, yes. I, I study in the UK I think probably you know that that affects me a lot when that's, it comes that's what uh, um, even the BBC say you know that you're you inspired <laughs> by the English garden uh, arrangements like you know your arrangements talk of the English garden. 
Yes, it's actually it it does influence me a lot. You know how how the flowers should be growing and how the flowers uh, natural habitat and the subtle changes of colors, uh, seasons, and how we should sort of work together and maybe you know like appreciate nature. You know, in a closer way is actually uh, quite an inspiration for me, and it still is. And I think, you know, with that, I'm pretty done. So this is oh, uh, super. a way so of structure. You know what? I mean, that, that uh, structure that you put there in the middle, upside down, and, you know, the apex there, it's giving a very good look, you know, just rising up there. Yes, and it's, it's a circular arrangement. It's very good in a sense that um, we can walk around it. And uh, a very good thing about the English style sometimes is that you, it, you can be, you can, it's immersive, put it that way, probably it's a good word. Immersive, it actually immerses yourself into this particular environment. If, and if you can zoom down a little bit, just to have a look at the bottom part of it, it actually is elevated and that helps with the entire um, look of the design. And those mimosas have gone into the form there as well, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and you know, you can see the colors, the gradation of it, transition, um, all the design and elements of, uh, all the design and elements, uh, all the design principles of, uh, and elements of designs, you know, are incorporated into this design. You know, this, this, uh, this arrangement, it's so, it, it, you know, it looks simple, but when you, if you were really to do it, it would need a lot of practice to do this, though it's like, you know, you put those um, mimosas there in a circular manner, you know, cascading down and the, uh, the um, uh, daffodils going up in the parallel uh, manner, but it really requires a seasoned hand there. It's actually, when you're talking about design elements and principles, it's actually, you can see the, the proportion here, you know, the, the portion of the container as well as the portion of this uh, floral composition above the container. You, you really need to sort of like internalize all the principles in order to do a naturalistic arrangement. It's, yeah, like you said, you know, sometimes it's easier just to look at me just putting in the flowers, but actually, you know, inside there is quite a lot of internalization of the principles. And maybe you do need to know like where things are grown, you know, it's natural habitat as well, in order to have a successful as well as convincing design for your audience to enjoy. I think so. I, you know, just one question here. So they, in the, the form there, it's the wreath, it's the, it's the oasis wreath that you used in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually, um, you can just use a wreath or maybe you can just use an oasis wreath that is filled with oasis as already. Or maybe you can just use it without any oasis. Just use it with no foam design. You can just tie the flowers onto the structure and or like I said, you know, you, you can even put a little container at the base of the of the of this vase here, you know, and, and, and that will create a completely different look as well. You know, like I said, you know, as long as you know the proportion, as long as your colors are correctly made, you know, it's like a monochromatic or something, um, uh, a style arrangement, you know, you just go with it and design something that you feel suitable and it will reward you with a lot of beauty. It does. I think, you know, all your three arrangements have all had different, uh, I mean, different um, um, design techniques being shown there. Uh, all of them have had different color palettes there. Plus, the, uh, uh, what you've told us about the flowers was very informative and educative. Thank you very much, Solomon. Uh, Thank you so the audience much. has enjoyed it thoroughly. Awesome designs. These are some of the um, the uh, uh, comments I'm reading. Awesome design. Great idea. Very beautiful designs are magical. So everybody on the show seems to have really enjoyed your demonstration. It's it's completely my pleasure. The pleasure is entirely mine. Thank you so much for having me. 
No, I think it was a wonderful afternoon, evening for us. We are going in afternoon, going into the evening. Well spent with you there. Lots of learning. Thank you so much. And um, audience, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's have it for uh, Solomon there. All the thumbs up, all the all the emotes that you can give give it to him. Thank you so much, Solomon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we are going to wait for your flowers. I mean, for your pictures. Uh, there is uh, with the audience. We are, sh we are um, sharing Solomon's coordinates on the screen. Solomon, thank you so much, and thank you very uh, we'll much. see you back in a, in a bit.